Hi guys, welcome to episode 114 of Wool and Spinning. I think we are live, but I am just looking at the stream health and it says it is yellow, which is amber, so it means that it's not like perfect. So I'm just waiting to see if it turns to green. And those of you who are in the chat, welcome. You guys have already been chatting. I was trying to maximize my battery on my camera, so I left it plugged in for as long as I possibly could until I started everything here. So I'm hoping that you guys are here and that you're watching. And I'm just gonna refresh my browser and make sure everything is okay. So if you guys can see me and you can hear me, if you can just uh, pop into the chat and say hello, that would be amazing, because I can see quite a few of you are watching and you're already saying yes in chat. So thank you so much, you guys. It's been a while. Uh, let me just preface the show by saying thank you to everybody who sent messages over the last couple of weeks um, just to say hello and to say that you're there. I tried to organize a live stream during spring break and no matter what I tried to schedule with my husband and what we tried to work out, it just didn't seem to work. And we tried really hard to try to get it to work. I was gonna get up really super early one morning. We had all these different ideas and just the more that we tried to figure it out, the more complicated it got and it just felt like we were trying to squeeze water out of a stone. So I felt like I really needed a break and just a chance to sort of regroup and refresh. We had a really rocky end to February, a really rocky beginning of Feb uh, to March. And I think I needed just a chance to take a deep breath, get away with the kids for a little bit and uh, just re regroup. So I appreciate your patience. Thank you so much. We will have an extra show in May to sort of make up for missing a show in March. I know you guys don't count and don't worry about that kind of stuff, but it's actually really important to me that we still stick to a regular schedule. And we have a sponsor for the show, which is Color Storms, my friend Linda. And she um, had sponsored the show through March. And because there was one last show, I wanted to make sure that she still was able to sponsor the number of shows that she wanted to sponsor. So long story short, I needed the break. Uh, thank you to everybody who sent such kind remarks about Charlotte. It was a very, very sudden death. She was our uh, dog that, um, she was my dog, she was quite elderly, and I just wanted to say thank you so much to everybody who sent kind words about her uh, passing, so thank you. All right, let's, this show is absolutely packed, and I just wanna make sure that everything is working. We've got green for our stream health now, so hopefully you guys can see a little bit clearer. I know when it's amber, the quality is really poor, so, um, now that we're in green, it's probably a little bit better. Somebody is watching on a plane while they fly to Hawaii. <laughs> um, I'm not exactly, oh, it's Carly. <laughs> so Carly's on a plane on her way to Hawaii watching the live stream. So I hope that she is uh, able to actually see us and is actually able to watch the whole show. So that's amazing. So Erica's here for a bit. Welcome, Erica. And Carly's chatting away, so I'm assuming that you're able to watch us. Judy, Diane, Elizabeth, uh, Rebecca, which is also Becca, Bethy Forty. Uh, she helps a lot on the Slack channel and in the Ravelry group, so welcome. Uh, Charlotte's here. Oh my goodness, you guys, There's lots of people. Priscilla, I hope I didn't miss anybody, but I probably did. So thank you and welcome. Okay, we've got, like I said, a very full show, and so I'm just gonna jump in. I'm hoping that the battery on my camera will be okay. I had it plugged in for as long as I could, like I mentioned. And so, in today's show, I wanna chat a little bit about Fibers West, because that was the big event that was happening while, which was part of the reason why getting a live stream out was so difficult. I wanna chat about that. I'm gonna chat about this yarn that's sitting here. We're gonna give away a calendar. We're gonna chat about these that are sitting here, and some of these yarns. So let's just get into the show. Color Storms offers a surprising variety of colors and bright shades made of natural dyes. I offer two kinds of worsted weight yarn that comes in both solids and gradient sets. My fingering yarn is a soft wool nylon blend that comes in gradient sets and multicolored sock sets called playful pairs. Last year I started dyeing fiber as well. It's all on my website colorstorms.com. On Instagram, you can see my latest dye work and experiments. I 
I have a full cup of coffee and I'm hoping that I don't lose my voice. That's been a problem over the last couple of weeks. I don't know why. Okay. I hope that those of you, even though we didn't have a live stream at the end of March, I hope that you guys saw that we had the proof for the book. This is it here. I'm not going to move my cameras around because we're going to be chatting about stuff down here in just a second. I'm having technical difficulties. I've already had to restart the computer a couple of times and Mike and I are actually looking into some new technology for the show, but it's not quite here yet. But this, the book is here. This is just a printed copy from the printer. So this is just sort of printed off the printer. Katrina and I were using it for editing and we were doing some just final read throughs, but we actually had the proof of the book. So if you've ever engaged in the publishing process, before you go to print the massive run of books, you do a proof and that's what we had at Fibers West. So that was really exciting. Thank you to everybody who put in a pre-order. It helps too when Authors who are self-publishing ask for pre-orders. The reason why they're doing that is because they're trying to figure out how many copies to print. So it just informs the process and informs how many actual physical copies the self-publishers want to actually publish themselves because remember that it's out of pocket. So that's what Katrina and I were doing and we took pre-orders the weekend of Fibers West. We decided because I missed a live stream at the end of March, we decided to actually leave the pre-orders live and active. So the link is down below in the show notes at patreon.com. And I think it's post, we'll just go to patreon.com slash pearls and then click on the posts tab. And regardless of whether you're a patron or not, it's all there. So we've left the pre-orders live because of me missing the live stream. So thank you to everybody who's already pre-ordered. Thank you for following along on Instagram and on the Three Waters Farm feed and on Cat Redding's feed and my feed and Katrina's feed. It's really exciting to see this actually come to an end. And I just want to say thank you so much. So that is out. We had that at Fibers West with us and a lot of people came by the booth and we're looking at all the samples. If you caught the teaching content for this month, I talked about this shawl, which was hanging behind me on my dress form all month. And I will talk about that later in the show. And then we had all of our samples from the book. So we organized them all, we put them onto cards and we had them all organized so that people could walk through the booth and flip through them, which was really cool. Because people who were really knew about the project and knew about the what we had been working on and were there to see the book and to see the proof, they walked through the booth looking at all of the different cards. So that was really cool to see people actually like looking at them and, and interacting with them. So thank you to everybody who, uh, yeah, who, who was just really excited about all that. My friend Lynn Anderson uh, is the owner and curator behind West Coast Wool Color, and she is up in the interior. Uh, she's actually in the Okanagan, and she developed this yarn. I'm just going to move that other stuff out of the way for just a minute. She developed this yarn that she's calling Homestead. Yes, Homestead. And she very graciously... I'm not going to grab them all, but she very graciously gave me three skeins of it, or five skeins of it, sorry. I'm only going to show you three because they're, they're down there behind me. And they still smell sheepy. They have just the best smell. And these, uh, this is a 100% Rambouillet yarn, and she has the rights or the ownership, I'm not totally sure how it works, to this, the clip. So every time the farmer that farms the sheep in Alberta, which is uh, the province next to British Columbia, every time he has a clip every season, and I think he's doing two shearings a, a year, she gets all of the wool and all of the fiber. And then it gets shipped off to Custom Wool and Mills, which is in Alberta, and as well. And then she gets all of the yarn and it's just amazing yarn so she wanted um, some feedback on the yarn and she wanted me to work with it and just to let her know what I think of it and so 
she hasn't started dyeing it yet. It's this natural white color. And like honestly, the twist angle in this yarn and just the bounciness of this yarn is just incredible. And it's because it hasn't been dyed yet and it's just been washed, it's sort of, I think it's going to really poof up. And Lindsay was saying, who's Artifacts of Appreciation on Instagram, she works with Lynn and she's her, I think she's like technically her marketing manager. She, um, she was saying that once it, it's dyed and, and it gets wet, it just poofs. So it, it looks right now like it's a de like a sport weight, but it's actually a worsted weight yarn. And you can feel the density of the yarn that like it's just going to bloom when, when it gets dyed. So I, I'm really excited to work with this yarn. I'm going to make the throwback by Andrea Maori. I don't know if you guys have seen this cardigan. It was the Rhinebeck cardigan this year. And... I um oh that's the wrong thing the reason why I decided to make that is because I wanted to do a little bit of color work with this I haven't done color work for a long time and I've been doing a little bit of color work on the cardigan that I'm working on right now and as soon as I saw this yarn that was the, the sweater that I thought of and I know that I'll wear it and so because Lynn hasn't start started dyeing this fiber yet that's the throwback it's because she hasn't started dyeing it yet uh, she, of course, right at this minute I get a text, right, uh, because Lynn hasn't started dyeing it yet, she's going to have it dyed for, I think it's Knit City, she, which is in October here in Vancouver, she, I asked her if it would be okay if Katrina dyed it for me, so I just have to divide up the skeins, I need to divide one of these skeins in half so that they're 150 yards each, because these are 300 yard skeins, and then I need to divide a, one of the other ones in half so that I can have my three colors. And I've already picked my colors. We're going to do a cinnamon color, a, br a blue color, and like a, oh shoot, it's like a camel color, like a light, light camel. And then the body of the cardigan is going to be sort of a taupey gray. And I just need to do that and divide up the skeins for Katrina, send them off to Katrina, and she's going to dye them up for me. So how cool is that? So that was really fun. That also ties into our monthly giveaway. So for March, we didn't have a giveaway because of just everything that was going on. I never started the episode thread. I just really dropped the ball after everything that happened at the end of February. And so let me just rescan this because I don't want it to get all messed up. So Lynn offered a giveaway for you guys. And... She let me root through all of her baskets of fiber at the show. So because we missed March, we'll do two giveaways for April. Where did they go? Here they are. So these are her... Sorry for the crinkling of the brown bags. I, I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. But there's two colorways here. This is my absolute most favorite colorway that uh, Lynn does. And she doesn't name her colorway. She just she just sort of dyes a whole bunch of fiber in the same way. And then if you mix them together, you sort of get a colorway when you finish spinning. So if you wanted, this is approximately 100 grams. So what I usually do with her fiber is I buy two that look similar and I spin one to one bobbin and one to the other bobbin and then I ply them together and then they look like they're a colorway. And this one's the purple. So she calls this her Biffle base, which is BFL. It's 100% blue face lister. And this one here is a Biffle, I think she calls it Biffle and Soy. Um, it's, it's BFL and 20% silk. So in 80-20 blend is this one. So in the March slash April episode thread in the Ravelry group. Um, if you could pop in there and tell us about some of your favorite patterns for hand spun and then later in the spring after that thread has sort of died out and we've moved on to other episode threads, I'll add any hand spun patterns that you guys share. I'll add them to the bundle in the Ravelry group that we already have going for hand spun patterns. So share your patterns whether you've knit them or not, something you've been coveting, something you think that would be really really great for spinning and knitting like a pattern that just would really lend itself to working with your hand spun. Now I'm going to extend this however so the weavers out there you can either post a knitting pattern and link it on Ravelry 
or you can post a weaving pattern and link it any way you want. So if it's something that's not really a formal written up pattern and it's something that's just like a texture, like a tutu twill or something, and you can just link it to something. So for the weavers out there, you can link either whatever works for you to share weaving patterns that you think especially showcase and show off hand spun. <laughs> Becca says, uh, I would, if Katrina didn't live so far away, I would ask her to dye my yarn all the time. <laughs> totally. <laughs> you could always ship her stuff and, and say pretty please. Hi, Megan. Hi, Becky. Hi, Karma. Good to see you guys. All right, let me just put that stuff away. So thank you to Lynn for the giveaways and for giving me the opportunity to knit with that homestead. I'm really excited to work with it this spring. And hopefully I'll have a finished sweater by the end of the summer because my goal is to knit it through the spring and the summer and then to wear it to Knit City to show Lynn. Although I did see Lynn randomly in a friend's driveway last night, so I might bump into her before uh knit city because um she her one of her really close friends is on the executive of our guild so when we were leaving ann's house last night <laughs> lynn drove up drove in so you never know all right so my friend Lori at knit city is disdaro ranch and i've talked about disdaro a lot on the show and she got some new business cards made up and I think she did a really beautiful job with them. Conserved with care and shared with passion and it's my friend Lori. And I was chatting with her and Mona in the booth for a long time on, on Saturday. It was quite a bit, it was really interesting this year at Knit City, cause, or sorry, at Fibers West, because last year the Friday was absolutely insane, but then Saturday was equally busy and it had this real frenzy all all of both days but this year it was more like what it's been in the past where Friday was really really busy there was a real frenzy and then Saturday was much quieter much calmer the morning was busy it got really busy around 11 o'clock until about two o'clock and then it sort of settled out again but Friday was busy 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 and there were people everywhere but then on Sunday there was sort of this calm and people were really walking around and visiting vendors were walking around leaving their booths and and visiting with other people so that was really cool but in last year was so frenzied that this year being a little bit quieter on the Saturday was really nice so I was able to go over to the Fibers West booth for a bit or to the Fibers West booth to the Disdero booth for a while and me and Lori were chatting and she was sharing with me these Rolex that she's been making. So these are, if you can see here on the label, these are these combinations of these fibers that I think are kind of left over from some of the stuff that she gets back from the mill. And so this one is like Coriadel, Romney, there's mohair in there and there's also alpaca. And then this other one is just 100% Romney. So she said she gave them to me and she said oh you spin them up you enjoy them blah 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 and i said you know i'd really like to share them with somebody on the podcast so what we're going to do in may because we have an april giveaway already so in may i'm going to work on these and spin these up in the in the background but i'm only going to take half from each so i'm going to take half of the romney and half of the mix and then the other half of each i'll put them together in one package and I'll give them away in May to one of you and we can share them. They're gonna make really textured yarn because if you can see in here, like there's locks in there that are still intact. There's downy fiber in there. There's just a lot of texture and a lot of variation, not so much in this one, but they're just really fun and they're gonna make some really amazing yarn. And if anybody follows Ashley Martino, of, I think she's changed her Instagram name to Nuevo. Nuevo, maybe somebody can look it up really quickly. Ashley works with Spinolution. I'm just looking her up on, on Instagram really quick. Um, yeah, Nuevo. You guys know Ashley, right? Oh, wait, I have to put it here now. Ashley. Her yarns are often very... Uh, she makes these just yarns like this. You know, they're coarse spun and then they're coil spun she and then she makes coils after she does what other stuff does she do she does a lot of this kind of stuff 
I love looking at what she's spinning. That's a singles that I just showed you. Uh, she does stuff like this. If you don't follow her on Instagram, you need to be following her. She's just amazing. Anyways, what I was thinking, what when I saw these roll eggs and when I saw these fibers and the way that they've been carded up and, and pulled off, that's the kind of yarn that I would expect. Um, that really textured, really interesting. Don't try and spin for fineness. I think it would just be really fun to play with this stuff. And yeah, so I'll divide these both in half and I'll share half with you and I'm going to work on the other half because Lori um, was so kind to offer me that. So I hope that I can share that with you guys. I did give a talk at Fibers West. That was really interesting. I'm not going to switch my cameras around because I'm going to be showing you more yarn down here in just a minute. But I have been really enjoying uh, working with all the sock stuff that we've been doing. So we've been doing a lot of stuff in, in Patreon at the moment, uh, talking about socks and the How I Spin content. So if you subscribe to the How I Spin vlog, or if you subscribe to the enhanced content, the Attentive Spinner, it's all of the content, you get the How I Spin PDF download that goes into a lot more detail of what I cover in the How I Spin vlog. And we've been looking at socks the last couple months, and we're going to look at socks again this month and then again next month. And um, so I, that's what I gave a talk about. And I showed them all of my samples and all of the stuff that I've been working on and all the different socks that I've been spinning and knitting and playing with twist and playing with color. I took a bunch of the pairs of socks that I had spun for, let's get this away from the microphone, sorry. I shared a whole bunch of the socks that Katrina and I had featured in the book. And I shared the woven samples that I do for the How I Spin content. I shared all of those and we talked a little bit about bias and we talked about twist direction and it was just really fun to get up there and to talk about this stuff that we've been doing in the in the Patreon stuff and, and in the How I Spin content, but that doesn't really get covered anywhere else. So it was really fun to take a few minutes and chat with, with everybody. And I have to say, there was quite a few people who came to the talk just to be supportive and just to be there because they're friends of mine and I care about them and they care about me. And that was really special. So you guys know exactly who you are and I just wanted to say thank you because it meant a lot and it was much easier to get up in front of a group of strangers and talk about the things that I love so much and that I know you guys love so much, but that sometimes other people are like, really, you're talking about that? Like, really? So regardless, thank you. Now, I don't know where my sock blockers are. I took them to Fibers West with me and I know they came home, but I'm not totally sure where they got put. So we're just going to have to look at these socks without the blockers. This is that Smith in You yarn that I was finishing up that I had the skein last time to show you and I couldn't find it. I did eventually find it. It had gotten buried under a bunch of other stuff. So this is a four ply cable and it was super wash merino and nylon. It was pin drafted roving and it was a massive amount. It was 100 and I think it was 140 grams was the the full amount of the fiber that I had. So I spun it up into a four ply cable and I had finished the first sock when we were going to stream the show last time when the one that sort of ended up getting getting missed. But, and since then, I've actually finished the second sock. And the reason why I wanted to get the second sock finished was for the sock talk at Fibers West. So these have made a really quite dense, quite substantial and sturdy sock. And they don't have a lot of elasticity, but they really have created a nice fabric. Now, I talked at length last show and was trying to show you and just felt really um, awkward trying to do it just because of where I was in my mental and emotional state during the show. Uh, I tried to show you how I was untwisting the yarn as I knit. So I kind of figured out a way to keep it from doing that throughout the knitting of these socks. But I think in the future for spinning cabled yarn and with the plan of knitting socks and knitting on such small needles, I will start in the opposite direction so that I end with a yarn, with a cabled yarn cabled in the S direction. 
because this yarn is finished in the Z direction because I started in the Z direction. So whatever direction with cabled yarn that you start in it, for spinning your singles is gonna be where you finish when you cable. So you spin your single Z, you ply S, and then you cable Z. So what I need to do is spin my singles S ply Z and then cable S and then I won't have that untwisting when I'm knitting and the socks turned out very well they still turned out really beautifully I was still able to compensate in my knitting for that untwisting but it wasn't a very natural way to knit and it was kind of annoying so in the end I can see that my the light on my camcorder is off a little bit it's not picking up it's kind of got like a yellow tinge to it so I'm sorry about that because it's not really the true color these are sort of more this color up here so and the camera down here I guess it's just blowing out it's not quite right for the for the color setting I'll have to play with that when Mike and I look at the tech stuff over the next week or so so I'm going to be getting some new equipment so full disclosure <laughs> Since those of you who are patrons of the show probably wonder sort of about some of this stuff that happens in the background, my original plan had been that um, I was going to, I, I have been setting aside and I have been saving for quite a long time. Uh, oh, to answer Sally's question before we move on, I'll come back to that thought. Do I knit continental? I knit continental. So that's why it was untwisting. Um, and it was I showed it on the show and it was quite significant so I had to knit these socks throwing so I had to knit English style and that's how I kept it from untwisting so uh, good question Sally because that is quite an important distinction to make so if your yarn is plied Z and you're a continental knitter you're gonna untwist your yarn um, which is why I tend to make sure that my yarns are spun S plied S my singles I tend to spin S because I untwist if they're spun Z. Does that answer your question, Sally, before I move on from these socks? Oh, awesome. Thanks, Sally. Okay, so going back to the loom for a minute. Uh, the So we I've had some... I've had some chats here on the podcast about what I'm going to do in terms of the weaving and I've got the Jane set up in the other room and I've been working on it quite a bit and actually I just pulled this off. It's just a little scarf. Uh, with some of uh, Katrina's yarn that um, she hasn't been using and it just made this little this little scarf it's a little bit too short for what I like but I've just been playing around and uh, my sister-in-law actually really loves these colors so well I may I might gift it to her as just like a little a little scarf anyway so I've been playing around with it quite a bit and my original plan was to invest in a brand new loom and I was sort of thinking about the Louette David and um, the bigger one. I think it's a 40, 36 inch weaving width or maybe it's, yeah, something like that. Anyways, that's what I was going to do. That's what I've been saving up for for the last couple of years. And now what's happened is that the... I'll come back to your question in a minute, Diane. One of the things that's come up in our guild is quite a few of our older members are starting to sell their looms. And so a 36 inch Harrisville has come up. And so I'm actually gonna go see it tomorrow. It's a eight harness. And I'm quite excited about it. I don't know if it's gonna work out, but it makes me feel like this is like the fourth or fifth loom that's come up in the last few months through our guild. And they're really well maintained because the guild members are, they, they're just so conscientious and they're real weavers and they've been weaving for a long time. And a lot of the ladies who are selling their stuff, it's because they're either downsizing or they have multiple looms and they're not using them anymore. And so they're getting rid of some of their looms that they don't use quite as much. And so we've had quite a bit of turnover in looms recently. So what I'm going to do is the money that I've been saving for the loom, I'm actually going to use for some of this stuff to upgrade my some of my equipment because we're having a lot of problems with our computer and my husband works from home quite a bit. So him and I have decided that we're going to take some of those funds and we're going to we're going to do some upgrades. He builds computers as well as he's he's a director of software engineering, but he's going to um, he builds computers as well and he really enjoys it. So I said to him, why don't we rebuild the computer? So that's what we're going to do. Mm. 
And Diane is wondering, wouldn't you end up twisting it even more, like ending up with too much twist? No, what happens with the way that I knit, and I don't know if this is the case for everybody, but what ends up happening is when I knit with S spun yarn, my yarn, the twist in my yarn doesn't change, but when I spin, when I knit with Z spun yarn, and like I said, I don't know if this is the case for other people, but for me, if I knit with Z spun yarn, I untwist it. But with S spun yarn, I don't seem to add or take away twist. I don't know why. There's something in the way that I knit that that is the case. So, and I've never tried to knit English style with S spun yarn. So I don't know if I would add twist to it or take it away. I'm not sure. But I know when I knit English style with said spun yarn, I don't add or take away twist. That's just me though. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, we can talk about that more in the future and we can do some experiments if you guys want to sort of see. I know there's been a lot of stuff recently coming out about people adding and removing twist when they knit. And to be honest with you, I've never had a problem until recently. So I don't know if the way that I knit has changed and I'm not sure if the... I don't know. I think, I think you're right, Diane. I think I'm special. <laughs> She just wrote in a thing, you were a special winky, winky face. I think you're right, Diane. <laughs> uh, does he watch YouTube videos of people comp building computers? You know what? He doesn't. And I think it's because he's done it for so long that he doesn't watch them anymore. Although he does, um, <laughs> it's just nerdy in a different direction from us. So true, Becca. I think um, he often will look up reviews and look up stuff or look up YouTube videos for specific parts that are new that he's wondering about. And then I catch him and I'm like, what are you watching? And he's like, oh, don't worry about it. It's new X, Y, Z, whatever. So like when we started the live stream on the show, he totally nerded out about it for a couple weeks. And then he taught me in like five minutes and I've just done it ever since. And I've never watched a YouTube video on how to live stream. <laughs> All right, let's move along. I was going to talk about, I have this brand, and it's in the show notes. So for those of you who look at the show notes, you might be a bit confused because I skipped right over it. I started a new spin, and it's Disdero Ranch. Do you remember that massive bag? It was massive of Romney that, uh, or it might have been Shetland, that, that Lori gave me from Disdero Ranch. I've started spinning it. I gifted some of it away on the show as some giveaways, and then I started knitting with it. So, um... I, it's upstairs. I'm just spinning it as a medium twist single. I'm going to apply it a little bit higher twist. And my plan is to weave with it. And I would like to weave quite a large piece of fabric. So what I'm actually doing right now is I'm spinning the second bobbin of singles. And I'm going to apply it together. And it's just um, a, a really beautiful heathered brown. And I can't think of anything in here that's the right color. But anyhow, it's a beautiful brown. And it's spinning up really nicely. And I'm going to ply it, two ply, and I'm going to add extra ply twist to it. And then I'll wash it and finish it. And then I'm going to do some sampling on my loom. So I'm going to get the Jane, get the warp finished on that. Because I've got one more scarf that I'm doing on there. Finish that up. And then I'm going to put that on and do some sampling. I'm going to do a little bit of tutu twill, a little bit of plain weave, a couple other patterns that I've picked out that I want to do. And then I'll know how I want to keep spinning. Do I want to spin it that way? Do I make, want to make some changes, spin the yarn a little bit differently? But my plan is to weave quite a large piece of fabric and to make something. So I'm not sure what that's going to look like, but that's sort of my big project for the next year. I just didn't bring the spinning down because it's upstairs in our room and the first bobbin is done and I just put on the second bobbin and I've just left it. So I will show that to you next show because hopefully... I'll have the second bobbin spun and I'll be able to show that to you before I start plying. So that's the plan. Okay, let's talk. I'm just looking at my notes here because I want to make sure that we get through everything. Somebody had asked in the chat about when the book will ship. So what has happened, and let me just grab it. So I, this is the printed off copy. So I'm going to put this down here and I'm going to show this to you really quick. And then we're going to talk about these yarns that are over here on the side. And I really want to talk about this today. So this is the cover. No, this is not the cover. This is the inside first page of the book. What happened when we went to, this is a perfect page to show you. When we got the proof, the margins and everything had were perfect. They were fine. Like when we submitted everything, they said that the margins were great and everything was fine. But when we got the book back and anybody who physically saw the proof at the show, 
probably noticed that there are a couple of places and this is a really good example where when you're trying to read the pattern it was too close in to the inside edge of the book because this is where the uh, spine is so rather than having that first proof fixing everything and then doing a huge run just trusting the process we decided to get a second proof so the second proof is actually supposed to arrive today or tomorrow and based on that we'll be ordering the book by friday so today is wednesday the patrons of the show are watching the show live streaming on wednesday the show will be released to everybody else on saturday morning and hopefully by then we'll have ordered the books so if not by friday then by monday and that was one of the things that we wanted to change and that was the reason for the delay in the books. So they'll be shipping hopefully by the beginning of the week of the 22nd at the latest. That's the plan. Oh, I just lost my chat. Hang on chat. I need to bring you back. Does anybody have any questions about that before we move on? Pre-orders are still live and we're in the process of converting the file to an ebook format. So the ebooks will be a lot will be available very soon. I think that's everything for that. I just want to wait for just a second to give you guys a chance to respond. Yeah, and thank you so much for everybody who uh, who pre-ordered. Like, it just has made such a huge difference for Katrina and I in terms of being able to get everything going. So thank you so, so much. Yeah, <laughs> so... What a bummer for you ladies after so much hard work. You know what? It was really good that it happened because if we had gone ahead and done the run of books and the numbers that we had planned on and that we are still planning on and we had gone and printed it, this isn't a good example. It was mostly in the patterns that we wanted to fix it. Um, so like in here, for example, the we would have been so disappointed. So it delays everything by about 10 days. But then on the other hand, we wanted to get this part right. Like how annoying would it be to be knitting a pattern that you can only see part of and that you have to break the spine of the book to get it to lay flat to see the pattern. So it was worth it to us to fix it. All right. Oh, thank you, Becky. That's very sweet. Um, yeah, thank you, Carly. We're pretty excited too. Uh, to be honest with you, so, okay, I, I told a couple people this, and Katrina told this story as well at uh, Fibers West to a few people. So those who are there, I'm sorry that we're, I'm repeating myself. But we, <laughs> we went out for dinner the week that we had ordered the proof and finished everything. And we're, we're driving. I, she came to my house, and we drove together to the restaurant. And we're driving, and she's like, this is really strange. She's like, we don't have to talk about the book. And we just burst out giggling because we all we've been talking about whenever we get together is talking about the book. And, you know, for two and a half years, your friendship can either weather that storm or it can't. And it's a big leap of faith that your friendship is strong enough to weather this kind of a storm in terms of, not because it was a bad process, but it's stressful and there's a lot and there was deadlines and self-inflicted, but still... And we had a lot of things that we were trying to accomplish with this book. And we've got some ideas for the future. And we, uh, you know, either it's going to either make or break your friendship. And it was really funny because for the first time we could actually sort of both of us, I think, felt like a big weight had been lifted off. But in a really good way. Because it wasn't like this was bad or anything. And it wasn't like we had issues we never fought once through the entire process, which is amazing. I mean, we're not really fighters, but you know what I mean. There, you, you worry. And through the whole thing, like it was just that getting on it and making sure that we were on the same page and making sure that we were consistently with each other in terms of what our vision was and what we wanted. And for the first time, we could kind of just sit and be like, how are you? Like for real, how are you? <laughs> you know, um, not, yeah, I'm fine. Okay, we got to talk about this, 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 and this. You know, it was really neat to see both of us just visibly relax. And uh, we were meeting Felicia that night for dinner. And Felicia is the uh, owner and curator behind uh, uh, Sweet Georgia. And she's a very dear friend of, of me and Katrina. And we were able to show it to her. And it was so fun for the three of us to sit and just chat and visit and talk about this that process together and yeah it's just that support of one another right so um meg says that she saw oh no way it was in um i think you say it mike mike 
Maika, I can't say, M-I-E-L-K-E's fiber newsletter. And it was on the Three Waters Farm Gazette. Yeah. I can never say, is it Mika, Michael, Milka? I can never, I, don't, I don't, never know how to say that. But it was in her fiber newsletter. So thank you to her. And yes, Three Waters Farm just published it in their Gazette last night, which is really cool. Because they sponsored, so Marianne actually gave us, I wonder if it's here actually, I can show you. Do you guys want a spoiler? Um, this was her fiber that she offered up to us. So here's a spoiler. I'm, I'm only going to flash this quickly, so get ready to pause if you're watching it from home. So she, that was one of the three Waters Farm colorways that's in the book, and this is the other one. So, and I know that she is going to be offering those two colorways in her shop very soon. Mirror Lake and Mirror Lake and Summer Jubilee. So let's talk about Mirror Lake. I'm going to switch. Oh, no, you know what? Let's just put a pause on talking about the book for a second. Talk about this because uh, this is March Club. It was uh, Katrina's March Club. The It was Tease Water and it's a gradient and I spun it as singles and I was really hoping that I would have it on the loom by now. But I wanted to show you guys the gradient because it's so pretty. So this is the gradient. It goes from this gorgeous teal color to this green to this white, to the natural white. And what I'm thinking about doing is actually putting it on my Cricut. And I'm going to use my, I think I have a 15 dent reed. I do. I have a 15 dent reed for my, for my Cricut. And... Oh, it's not a Cricut. It's an Ashford Samplet. It's the little one, the 11, the 11, 10 inch, 11 inch. And I think I'm just going to warp this up really gently and because they're singles and I did fold them, but I just don't want them to break um, in the warping process. And I'm just going to use some 2-8 cotton, some white 2-8 cotton. So, you know, I don't want that to break, right? So... Um, they're pretty strong because I fold them, but I just, you know, I, it's a lot of pressure to put your yarns, singles yarns under tension. And I'm going to weave with some 2-8 cotton, which was right here. I have to clean up this room because everything's like all over the place. So I'm just going to put some 2-8 cotton with it. And actually I might end up, this is very white because it's bleached. It's that like true white that they do. That's just like that really... It's really white. I think I might actually uh, go down to Brenda's in the next couple weeks. So I might put this project on hold. And I might actually get her natural linen color because it's more like this color. It's not quite so stark. So actually seeing that and talking it out with you guys right now. Thanks for your support. <laughs> I think I might do that. So that, that was March Club. And I loved spinning this. I did it on my Lendrum upstairs in the evening while the kids were in the bath it took me about three evenings I spun really slow I just spun through all the little nests of fiber that Katrina had had provided and um, I spun it at 11 to 1 super super easy spinning short backward and I really enjoyed it it was exactly what I needed after Charlotte died um, I needed a mindless really gentle kind spin and that was exactly what this gave me which I think is why I'm so keen to weave it up so quickly because I really enjoyed the spin and I want to create a scarf from it because I'm kind of thinking of this yarn now as like Charlotte's yarn. So um, I think that's why in the back of my mind I want to work with it so quickly. So yeah, Katrina is really amazing. <laughs> Somebody says, oh pretty Katrina, you're amazing. Yes, yes she is. Um, Meg says, oh pretty. I was drilling over that skein when you posted on the blog. Yeah, so true, Becca. I love it. Um, oh, Milka, Becky says, okay, so that's how you say her name, the fiber newsletter, Milka. Uh, thank you so much for clarifying because I don't know how to say that. So are you warping it so that you get a vertical gradient? Yeah, exactly, Diane. So I was thinking that it would go this way and then my weft will be the 2-8 cotton. So it'll go from the dark teal all the way across to the natural undyed and it'll be, um, it'll be the warp. So I won't do, it won't be the weft, it'll be the warp and it'll go um, across this way. Does that make sense? That was my thought anyways. That's what I was thinking in my head. 
So if anybody has any suggestions, I am very much open to them. You can put them down in the comments below. Because if I need to get a new weft yarn, which after our chat just now, I do, uh, I'll be delayed by a couple weeks for that. But I, I don't mind. I want it to be what I have in my head. So warping and weaving on rigid hello is really gentle on the yarn. I'm sure you'll be fine. Oh, thanks, Erica. So I had done that other singles warp and weft back at Christmas time. I did the uh, Wensleydale, no, it was the Sweet Georgia BFL uh, as the warp and it was a singles yarn and then I did the weft in the Wensleydale and they were spun at more of like a DK weight and this is definitely a fingering. So I was hoping that I'd be okay because the rigid heddle, like you don't have to pull it quite as tight. So I was gonna run it by those in the Slack channel. We have a new, uh, in the Slack channel, there's a new, if you haven't looked for a while, there's a new, channel and it's for just weaving. I was going to post that question in there, but Erica, you've helped me. So thank you so much. All right. Okay. Let's, I, I am going to talk very briefly cause I'm going to start spinning it. Um, I'm going to talk really quickly about the, Oh, here it is. The April club because it's really pretty. And I also need to talk to you guys about the breed and color studies because it's just started. So this is Katrina's April club and it is gorgeous. And I'm going to start spinning these on my spindles in the next couple of days because I just am craving a spindle spin. So I've already got my, my Turkish spindle out and I've just, I just haven't actually started spinning yet, but these are just beautiful. So 77% UK organic which is just, oh, it just feels amazing. 15% llama, and it was so funny because Katrina texted me and was like, are you allergic to llama or alpaca? <laughs> and I was like, the text that you get from your friends. And I said, no, no, I'm allergic to alpaca. So I'm okay with alpaca yarn to a point, and I'm okay wearing alpaca for the most part, as long as it's at least 50% wool. But when it comes to spinning alpaca, I'm having more and more trouble with it. And it's, I think it's the dander and the stuff that comes off of it while I'm spinning. I start sneezing like crazy and I don't have any allergies and it really irritates me. So I'm getting to the point where I really can't spin alpaca anymore. So I'm, when she texted me, I felt really, it was really kind of her because I wasn't, I wouldn't have been able to spin it if it was alpaca, but she would have given me the basic club if that had been the case, because this is the luxury club for April. And then there's 8% Tessa Silk. So that is the blend. And she gave me 53 grams to spin up, and I'm just gonna play with it on my spindles. And isn't that pretty? It's very spring. Yeah, I always crave my spindles in the spring to be outdoors. Isn't that the truth? I was spinning the other day outdoors with my Kapar. My favorite spindle in the whole world is my Kapar Turkish spindle, my medium weight. And it's about 33 grams. I just love it. And um, I just felt like, yeah, this is that time of year. You know, it was so lovely to just be out there and walking in the cul-de-sac with the kids while they rode their bikes. James got a brand new bike from a friend and it's a really generous gift. And it's got gears and it's got handbrakes and it's got front shocks and he goes around telling everybody it has front squish because <laughs> my, my brother's a mountain biker and he's like, oh, it has front squish. So now he's like, my bike has front squish. It's so funny. Anyways, they've been riding their bikes a ton and um, I've been spindle spinning outside again. It's just like, sort of how it was every other summer. And it's just been really enjoyable. All right. Let me show you this really quickly because I'm going to spin this up very soon. This is a Wensleydale mohair bat that Katrina, uh, that I bought from Katrina, but she made it for me like as like a commission. Um, so I'm, I, I bought it from her, but, but I asked her for something very specific. Um, so it's, I think it's 78, 12% mohair. I think 78% Wensleydale. Anyways, I'm doing socks with it. So stay tuned because I wanted to work with a fiber for something that I'm working on in the spring that was an alternative to nylon for strengthening socks. So I wanted to share that with you before I actually start spinning it. So gorgeous colors. I told Katrina to pick the colors for me. I said she could do whatever she wants. And of course she gave me her favorite colors, which is awesome. 
I just love these colors. They're beautiful. So thank you to Katrina for doing that for me. Okay. Do you guys want to talk about the shawl behind me? Let's talk about the shawl behind me. I'm going to move the cameras around. Let's hope that this works. If I lose you guys, stay put. Fingers crossed. So the question is, um, do I think, do I think it's because alpaca isn't scoured like wool and the dander and such is still in the fiber? Oh, it is Tiffany. I was going to say Tiff, but I wasn't sure. Uh, you know what? I, that's, I think that's what it is. I think it's the dander and I don't know. Because washed alpaca still gives me the same problem, but because it's not ever scoured, there's definitely something that comes off of the fiber that I really react to. So it, it is the dander, but maybe if it was scoured, it, it would be okay. I honestly don't know. All right, let's talk about this though, because I'm really excited to share this with you. I know that it's not in focus, so I'm going to take it off my dress form. This is my final breeding color studies project. And let me just focus the camera a little bit so that I can lean back. There we go. Okay. Thank you for bearing with me, you guys. We've had quite a few technical difficulties the last couple of shows and uh, you guys have been very gracious about it and thank you so much. Um, all right, so this is a pattern from the book. And I was sort of test knitting it one last time because, because I wanted to reverse the colors. So in the book, the white is the, um, the white is the hand spun and the hand spun in is the white. So if you look at this version, which is the one photographed in the book, you start with hand spun. And in this one, because I had, I didn't know how much yarn I had for what I was doing, uh, because the breed and color studies, I had so little yarn left. Um, I started with the contrast color instead, which is the white. So this is the Tunis that I thought was the Coriadale. And I ran out of yarn, so I ended up with only having this little bit left. And so I asked Katrina if she could give me hers. Well, she offered it. And so I washed it and scoured it and it came up beautifully. And I had about half, it was less than half a pound. It was probably about a quarter of a pound in total. And um, I gave her a whole bunch of it. And then I just kept what I thought that I needed. And this is all I had left. That's it. And my yardage for both of my skeins of Tunis was about 225. So this is about 500 yard, um, about 400 yards of yarn. Hopefully that's in focus for you guys. I might have to lean forward a little bit. There we go. So this is an asymmetrical shawl. And you start by building the triangle at the top. And then from there, you start working a series of short rows so that one side, this side, gets longer and longer and longer. And the other side stays relatively small. And I wove in all of my ends and I was a good little girl and I did it properly and I didn't knot anything and I did it as I knit because Eve said that that was the best way to do it because I would resent it when I was done. And I forgot to weave in one end. <laughs> and I had a ton of ends, if you guys remember me showing this to you. So on, it sort of looks like this. And it's just, I just love it. It's just huge and it's massive and it's not at all small. Let me just back up a bit, my stool's in the way. So this is what it looks like on. Isn't that amazing? I love the colors. So if you look, for those of you who participated in Breeding Color Study, you can see that it goes from the, the white colorway. This is all the white colorway, all the way down. And then I had one stripe of the main colorway and then one of the black, which makes sense because the yardage, um, the, the increases start to 
get make the shawl oh i have another end i have to do there's another one right right there oh well I have to cut that off um the lengths of the rows get longer and longer and longer so it kind of makes sense that the the yarn didn't make as many stri stripes deep but isn't that cool and then this is the one from the book so this is this is mirror lake uh which is a three waters farm colorway with katrina's tough and tender sock base in natural and we spun this chain ply the uh, mirror lake and that's what it looked like in the end so the short rows are worked in the tough and tender and the garter stitches here are done in the hand spun so it's the opposite of what I'm wearing. So, but that's just because I didn't have as much yarn. So this is called the Looking Glass Shawl. And my friend Jess did a sample for us as well, which actually is down here somewhere. And we're gonna gift it back to her for to say thank you for doing it for us. And it just meant that there was a few um, different sort of options and different ways to knit the shawl and uh, because she did the opposite as well, so she did the white into the into the color like like this one. So, anyways, it's just so really fun to like finally be able to talk about this. And if you guys remember uh, from way way back when, actually I can grab it. It's right here. Okay, hang on one sec. For those of you who've been with me since the beginning and have watched the episodes from the beginning, you'll remember this shawl. It was Hedgehog Fibers. It was a club colorway. And it was black alpaca, uh, superwash merino, and gold sparkle. And it looks like this. This was the original pattern. So this was my original idea. It was my original brainchild that this eventually became. And this for the book. So, yeah. So I've been wearing this all these years. And... Uh, I finally got to do something with that pattern so it's very hot <laughs> I'm really warm now <laughs> um, but the tunis really knit up beautifully and it really I think it really worked really well for this uh, for this shawl it's just a gorgeous yarn it's a true worsted yarn so in May we're gonna be getting into true worsted in our 51 yarn spin along we're gonna be exploring true worsted and true woolen and that is the yarn that I discuss for that so I hope that you guys are looking forward to that. I'm just going to look um, at the chat because chat has been very chatty. So let me just catch up really quick. I love those shawls. I really can't wait for the book now. Thank you, Erica. Um, different feel. It has a really different feel. Yeah, it's funny how like you change one thing or you change the yarn or you change the fiber and it completely changes the shawl. Because like this is a worsted weight. It was knit on five millimeter needles. This is a sport weight. It was knit on four millimeter needles. This is sort of a sport weight knit on four millimeter needles and they're all totally different, but they're the same pattern. It's just amazing. It's all about, all about fiber and what you choose. What were the drafts for the spins? This was all worsted. So this was spun worsted, short forward uh, chain ply. This was short backward all of this was short backward and spun allowing the uh no i didn't allow any twist so it was still worsted but it was short backward so much loftier yarn much airier not quite so dense i'd love to knit an asymmetrical shawl i'm completely useless when it comes to styling <laughs> oh me too <laughs> i look at how my sister ties on her shawls and i'm like how do you do that I'm just going to move the cameras around. Bye, Becky. Be uh, Becky, thank you for coming. We're going to talk about breeding color studies now because that was the conclusion of breeding color studies. And now we are going to start our new breeding color studies. So these are the colors. And that is the inspiration photo. So Katrina has outdone herself again. So this was the photo that we picked from the inspiration thread for breeding color studies. And I love this photo. As soon as Katrina said that that was the one that she had picked, I was like, yes, because <laughs> um, I love this photo. So if you look really closely at the photo for just a moment, so our breeding color studies start April 1st and October 1st. Our October is always a combed preparation and our April is always a carded preparation. 
So this is the carded fiber and I just wanted to say like if you really look at the photo and look at the colors in the photo, they're very neutral. If you've listened to the most recent episode of Wool and Spinning Radio, which was episode number, I think it was 34. It was the one that just came out just a couple of days ago for April 1st. I released it to everybody instead of doing a limited release because I wanted you guys to hear it right away. We talked about the inspiration. We talked about what we were thinking about with this study. We're still looking at black and white. So if you look at the Rolex on the far left, they are black, carded in with the colors. And if you look at the Rolex on the far right, they are white, carded in. Now, there's also going to be these kits available, and I've already opened mine up. So the kits have all of the colors, and then they also have black and white, so that you can do whatever you want with them. So you can either get the roll eggs, which are one of the options, or you can get these, you can get both, you can get multiples, whatever you want to do. But all of these colors are in those roll eggs and are carded up in those roll eggs. And what is so incredibly amazing to me and Katrina is how different the colorways are. Like those look like two totally different colors in two totally different colorways. They're the same colors. One's just had black added and one's had white added. Isn't that incredible? So that is what we're going to be talking about for the next six months on, um, in the Ravelry group. So there's a Ravelry group for the Breed and Color Studies. It's there, uh, ready to go. I'm, I've just, got, I think I've, I don't know if I've actually made it yet, but if I haven't, I will. And you guys can start chitter chattering about that. And again, we have our FO thread, which is chatter free, please. And you can post on an ongoing basis for all of our Breed and Color Studies. Um, yarns and projects as you make them and just add, keep adding them to your post for one study and then when we start another study and you want to post about that one post your new finished photos for in another post I'm so glad you guys like it lots of people have um, are saying how much they like it it's Dorset horn not Dorset down it's the same thing um, what time will they go live okay so in terms of actual like the dates and the times um, for the patrons, it will go live. Um, uh, that post will be posted for you guys uh, in the next couple of, in the next week, but it will be April 15th, Monday, April 15th, and you guys can look at the dates and times, and then it will go live later in the day for everybody. So if you want to participate and you don't necessarily want to buy fiber, but you want to participate in the, in the spin along, please feel free if you've got Dorset. Dorset down, Dorset horn, whatever in your stash, just participate. Um, if you want to buy some of your own diet yourself, please just hop right in. We're looking at carded prep though. So um, we're trying to look at sort of how the down breeds and the down wools spin and work in a carded prep. So we do carded in the spring and in the winter we do combed, which is kind of fun. So it means that we're really, uh, um, encouraging ourselves to spin both things and to not only spin what we love and what our comfort zone is but to go back and forth and to spin both so i hope you guys like it i'm glad that you do the initial reaction looks like you guys really do is it always morning time yes priscilla it will be in the morning pacific standard time uh the one thing i will say about this time round is katrina and i've really tried hard to ensure that there will be more product this time. So hopefully there will be uh, more than what you guys are used to in the past and there won't sort of, you won't miss out if you can't hop on immediately to order. So for those of you who are really concerned about not being there right on the moment, there should be enough for everybody, especially if you only order one to start with and come back later for more if you want more, but just to allow other people a chance to order as well. There will be more roll eggs than there will be kits. So for those who would like a kit, um, there won't be as many, but there will still be a fair number. So maybe don't worry quite as much this time, I hope, fingers crossed. And it will be on the Crafty Jacks website, yes. So all of those links will be posted in the next week or so and I can answer all of those questions, okay? Um,
I have a calendar to give away for the patrons of the community. It's the, oh wait, I have to be back here, for 2019, and it is LM Miles. Congratulations, and I've already messaged you, so I just need your mailing address. So if you can pop on and give that to me, that would be wonderful. Congratulations. We have no other giveaways this month, but I did announce the one for April. So hop onto the Ravelry group. The links are down below, and you guys can enter for that. This month's sponsor of the show is colorstorms.com. Thank you to Linda for that. And if you guys hop on over there and support her, that would be awesome. Support a small business. 51 yarns. We are looking at double coated wools, the second half of the double coated wools this month. And we are also looking at spinning at a retreat or a festival because that was where it fit in the calendar for me. If you're not going to be at a festival or a retreat or anything this month, don't worry about it. Do that yarn when you get to it. Um, but that's what we are talking about in the vlog this month. And that's what we're talking about in the thoughtful spinner. So thank you to those who have continued to support on Patreon. It makes all of this possible. So thank you so, so much from the bottom of my heart. And welcome to all of the new patrons over the last month or so. Um, I really appreciate it, especially because we didn't have that additional show in March and we sort of had a little bit of quiet for a couple months and you guys were still around and still engaging and I really appreciate that. And we also have a newsletter and that's on wellherpearls.com. Just hit subscribe, it's for everybody and it just keeps you up to date on what's going on in the community. If anybody has any other last minute questions, I'll hang on for just a couple minutes while you guys pop on and ask. And I hope, uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that you enjoyed the show. I, I really appreciate all of you coming and watching the show and participating in the live stream. It makes it so enjoyable for me. And it was really weird over the last three weeks because I really missed it. And I really missed seeing you guys and chatting with you and doing the show and interacting. And it's not that I was surprised, but... I thought about it a lot and I felt like there was a void. So I wanted to say thank you because um, after stuff that was sort of very challenging at the beginning of the month to cope with and, and just a lot of things going on in general, um, I knew that you guys were spinning away and making away and just really um, excited about stuff. And I always feel like in the spring there's this rejuvenation of projects and things that people are thinking about. They're looking at their goals that they made back at the beginning of the year and thinking about whether or not they want to pursue those still and there sort of see, always seems to be this little like buzz that goes on for the next couple of months so thank you so much uh in terms of where you can pre-order the book you can go to craftyjacks.ca and there's a there will be a link in the show notes so um karma in particular if you go to patreon.com slash roll for pearls click on episode 114 and the pre-order links are in the show notes all right yeah, thank you, Diane. Thank you to Becca. Thank you to Megan. Um, thank you to Charlotte. Oh, this is Charlotte's uh, photo, by the way. It's Carlotta's photo. She, her screen name, her username is Carlotta. So thank you, Charlotte, for posting such a gorgeous photo because these colors are as a result of that photo. So very cool. All right. Oh, that's so lovely, Priscilla. This is a great way to end the show today. So Priscilla says, so glad I stumbled upon you all. Already my spinning has become better and I credit it all to your information. Thank you, Priscilla. And thank you to this amazing community. I'm hoping by next show, I'll have a floor loom to talk about. So let's um, keep our fingers crossed. I'm going to see it tomorrow. And uh, yeah, thank you everyone. Happy spinning and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.